Stat quest is totes cray cray. Stat quest. Hello, I'm Josh Starmer, and welcome to Stat Quest. Stat quest is brought to you by the friendly folks in the genetics department at the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill. Today, we're going to compare simple and multiple regression in R. And just so you know, the R code used in this video is available on the StatQuest website, statquest.org. This StatQuest picks up from where the StatQuest on multiple regression left off. Here's the raw data that we're going to use in our analysis. I've created a data frame with measurements for size, weight, and tail. For simple regression, we will focus on how well weight predicts size. Step 1. Always plot your data. We specified weight for the x-axis, and we specified size for the y-axis. Plotting your data as a first step is super important because it allows us to evaluate whether doing a linear regression to begin with is a good idea. Can we see a relationship in the data between size and weight? In this case, we can, and that means doing a regression makes sense. Step 2. Use the LM function, where LM stands for linear model, to fit a line to the data. In R, this is how you specify the following equation. We specify size is predicted by weight by using the tilde character between size and weight. And by default, R adds the terms for the y-intercept and the slope. R then uses least squares to find the values for the y-intercept and the slope that minimize the squared residuals from the line. Once we've run the linear models function and saved the output in a variable called simple.regression, we can get a summary of that regression using the summary function. Calling the summary function on simple.regression gives us a huge pile of stuff. The most important stuff is down here. Specifically, the r-squared and the adjusted r-squared. Multiple r-squared is just another way to say r-squared, by the way. Also, for simple regression, the multiple r-squared value, or just plain old r-squared, is the one we're interested in. The adjusted r-squared only applies when we have more complicated models. We'll use it later when we do multiple regression. There's also the p-value down here. Together, the r-squared, which equals 0.613, and the p-value, which equals 0.012, say that weight does a pretty good job predicting size. The last thing we want to do for our simple regression is add a line that shows the least squares fit on the graph. We do this using the AB line function. Now let's do some multiple regression. For multiple regression, we will use weight and tail to predict size. Step 1. Always plot your data. Since we didn't specify the x and y axes, R plots all the data columns, size, weight, and tail, against each other. This is super useful because it generates all the plots we need to decide whether doing a multiple regression with this data makes sense or not. This graph plots size on the y-axis and weight on the x-axis. This is what we used before in the simple regression. Down here, we have the same exact data, however this time, size is on the x-axis and weight is on the y-axis. These two graphs are similar, only the axes have been flipped. The graph in the upper right-hand corner has size on the y-axis and tail on the x-axis. And in the lower left-hand corner, we have another graph that's very similar, just the axes have been flipped. This graph has weight on the y-axis and tail on the x-axis. And just like for the other graphs, these two graphs are similar, just the axes have been flipped. We can see that both weight and tail are correlated with size. This is good. It means that both weight and tail are reasonable predictors for size. 
we can also see that weight and tail are correlated. This means they provide similar information and that we might not need both in our model. We might only need weight or tail. Step two, use the linear model function to fit a plane to the data. In R, this is how you specify the following equation. Using the tilde and the plus symbols, we specify that size is predicted by weight and tail. And by default, R adds the terms for the y-intercept and slope 1 and slope 2. Once we've run the linear models function, we can print out a summary of the results using the summary function. Again, summary gives us a big pile of stuff. The R-squared, adjusted R-squared, and the p-value look good. Hooray! Note, since we're doing multiple regression, we're now more interested in the adjusted R-squared value. With multiple regression, this section is more interesting. This line compares the multiple regression to the simple regression. It compares this model, which uses both weight and tail to predict size, to this simpler model, where we're just using tail to predict size. This is the p-value. It means that using weight and tail isn't significantly better than using tail alone to predict size. Now let's look at this line. It compares the fancy multiple regression where we use weight and tail to predict size to a simple regression where we just use weight to predict size. This is the p-value. It means that using weight and tail is significantly better than using weight alone to predict size. In summary, using weight and tail to predict size is good, but if we wanted to save time, we could spare ourselves the agony of weighing mice and just use their tail lengths to predict size. Hooray! We've made it to the end of another exciting stat quest. If you like this stat quest and want to see more, please subscribe. And if you have any suggestions for future stat quests, we'll just put them in the comments below. Until next time, quest on!